Welcome. I'm Taylor Marsh, and this is Astral Soul Lightning, a podcast about making meaning, manifestation, and energies we navigate. How we create through archetypes, symbols, spirituality, and our instincts and intuitions. We're in the days of what astrologers call the eclipse gateway between solar and lunar eclipses. The mythology of eclipse seasons, which happen twice a year, every year, is these energy events bring faded shifts, change, and expose shadow side vulnerabilities of us all. Between April 30th and May 16th, 2022, eclipses have an impact weeks before and for many weeks afterward. There's a contagion effect on both sides of the eclipses. This is true no matter the year or where the eclipses originate. The nodes of the moon designate what planets are involved, which translates mytho- mythologically to certain astrological signs. The nodes are currently in Taurus and its mirror sign, Scorpio. Think back to the end of 2003 and into the spring of 2004, which was the last time these two signs were in these nodal positions. What happened in your life? When people talk about the law of attraction, it's couched in mental terms, how you're talking to yourself. The tape in your head. I'm laying out another way. All positive affirmations will enliven your psyche and soul. Through experience, I've learned timing is as important. I've mentioned moon void, of course, but other than this, it's not a daily obsession about the energies. For the average person, acknowledge the moon's position when it's full or new. Eclipses impact us all. When planning an important event, whatever it is, personal or professional, I can attest these things matter. In this eclipse portal of possibilities, imagine your life in another way or add on to your fabulous life in your vision, through your vision. Don't let it go no matter how hard events challenge you. These energies challenge us all. To remake your life and upgrade your experiences from your heart center, your passions and your desires, it takes adjustments and nothing happens overnight. This eternal, holy message never expires. Each of us is here for a reason. Primary is the advancement of our soul. Choices matter along the way because when planetary energies swirl and square, they aren't the reasons why humans perpetually get things wrong. Choosing ego over all else is how life goes awry. The swoon of the American right under Trump requires a counterweight, which is why the January 6th committee hearings will make the difference in our nation's future. Nothing is collectively faded. Energies exert pressure and pull, but we are the most advanced species in human history. We each decide, and the majority who's most committed will write the next 50 years of American history. The faded surprises, changes, and losses that coincide with an eclipse are challenging and equally liberating and exciting. The less we fight our evolution, the closer to flow we venture. I've experienced heavy personal losses that began within the eclipse gateway timeline, but lasted long afterward because the next change was connected to the event that happened inside the gateway. The words and phrases I choose are how I make sense of the messages downloaded that warn me of coming shockwaves. Changes in my soul. Shocks have ruled my life. So wild planetary passages inspire me. I've learned the value of Mercury retrograde, too, and look forward to these regular periods during the year. It's a blessed time to recheck choices, to strengthen resolve before going forward. Redoing part of my world online is 
a big part of my ritual during these Mercury retrograde seasons. But then I've been online since 1996. The astral weather report, as I call it, is one component meant to bolster gut instincts and intuition, so choices are attached to them. It's a personal decision whether you follow a timeline you want to bet on. My experience has proven that being pushed at prime astral times by strong energies has helped me make sense of when to plan creative launches and even confirm the tug of my creative soul wanting to go where I never imagined I'd venture. Talking about these subjects... I mean, really, astrology and energies and spirituality is way off where I started. But my soul is tugging me in this direction. I'm a creative master, but life mastery takes a different toolbox. The less we struggle with change, the closer we come to the law of attraction, where God or source toils. My analysis is not like an astrologer's because I'm not an astrologer. Their art is practiced by technicians who know mathematical details about planetary movement that doesn't interest me as much because I know myself and can make smart choices based on deep inventory. But the mathematical details of an astrologer allow accuracy with clients, most of whom are strangers. What, have I, what I've experienced since I was a young girl is as a witness to energy. I feel it, especially when someone, even people I meet or see on the street, walks by and I can sense their health isn't good or even they're, gra- they're in the grasp of decline. I was confronted with death before I was 10 multiple times and had interchanges across the veil. My intuitive psychic gift is an experience that surprises me every time, especially when the download (laughs) is meant for me. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Nothing astral, though, is good or bad. It's complicated, but the easier you embrace challenge that you likely knew was needed anyway, the more in rhythm you'll become. So... What's happened so far amid the two eclipses in 2022? Why does it matter? To many events to enumerate, so I'm just going to lay out a few here. Maybe you have your own that you can add in as I read these. On Thursday of this past week, the January 6th committee subpoenaed five Republican House lawmakers, including the leader of the GOP caucus in the House. It's never been done before. So the question to answer is, can a congressional committee subpoena members of Congress? Another thing that happened days before the partial solar eclipse in Taurus, Elon Musk bought Twitter. Much to play out, so this will be interesting to watch. So far, Musk shows the shadow side of Taurus, which mythologically translates to he doesn't listen to anyone, couldn't care less how he impacts others. We shall see. Sinn Féin won their largest majority for the first time in history in Northern Ireland. Queen Elizabeth II ceded responsibilities to Prince Charles, the king in waiting for the jubilee for the first time in her reign. Prince Philip, Prince, uh, Philip was also involved. Wall Street is in the process of a massive correction with supply chain issues causing panic. As someone whose life was shaken to the core by the dot-com bomb, the current climate is a deja vu moment financially. It's not over either. Netflix Netflix is shrinking, although they had a good uh, week, for the first time and announced to employees advertising may enter the platform by year's end. This is a big deal. The backstory to the book and blockbuster Game Change, written by John Heilman and Mark, I can't even think of his last, Halperin, (laughs) sorry, Mark Halperin, was revealed by uh, uh, Steve Schmidt, who who was played by Woody Harrelson in the movie. 
and it's now streaming on Hulu. Schmidt this week unloaded on Meghan McCain and spilled the ugly truth about Senator McCain's connection with Russians and his aides inside the senator's last presidential campaign. Paul Manafort, ring any bells for you? It was an epic Twitter tirade that turned into an interview at, uh, in several places, and he even confessed to having to, go, having to go to deep therapy. It was just, he said it was time for him to just let it go. This is very eclipse-fated oriented. Finland has joined NATO, which they weren't inclined to do before Putin invaded Ukraine. It's been revealed the country legend Naomi Judd shot herself due to mental health issues. Then there's Florida, and Ron DeSantis continues his authoritarian reign. In addition, the worst baby formula crisis in decades after COVID hit and supply chain issues mounted, then a recall worsened the shortage. When the FDA stepped in to investigate, they needed time to find the source that caused the death of four infants. Price gouging resulted on the formula that is available. Of course, we saw last week Samuel Alito's draft opinion dropped, and the subsequent Democratic bill this week to codify Roe failed. People are rethinking the Supreme Court, an institution that's that's taken a deeper blow to their legitimacy since the draft dropped. Changes to the rules justice, justices must follow are being discussed in Congress. There are many more I could name. Have you had surprises in your life during the eclipse season so far? Faded events you couldn't control that changed your perspective or made you think harder about your priorities. People don't like change, but it's the game of life. The evolution that results from challenges is in our DNA. We're made to evolve. Even the New York Post had an article on eclipses, and the author gets it right. A quote from Kyle Thomas from his article in January, quote, Destiny calls your name. Will you answer? Your life will never be the same again. Whether or not you're ready, the universe has chosen. It's time for rapid change. Eclipses are known for shaking people out of their positions and their complacency. Resistance is futile. This is the evolutionary wheel moving whether we like it or not. Change, change comes with force when people don't make the shifts themselves. Queen Elizabeth II comes to mind. She's 96 years old and can't relinquish power gracefully. There's Senator Dianne Feinstein, who is known to be having cognitive difficulty at her age that's easy to see. But she won't relinquish her Senate seat. She's in her late 80s. The same can be said by the power brokers in Washington, D.C., but many of them refuse to admit the obvious about the insurrection on January 6th. History will prove their complicity. The notion that the U.S. Constitution should be interpreted as originally intended is being questioned again. I started this podcast series talking about Einstein and his belief that imagination was more important than knowledge. This theory is one that resonates deeply with me. Einstein couldn't prove his theory of relativity, but he had the imagination to think beyond what was provable. His mathematical calculations and theory allowed his imagination to take flight into a vision that changed science and human history forever. As I explained in an earlier podcast, his theory was proven during an eclipse. Thinking about the framers, the imperfect, brave geniuses who were flawed but envisioned America through documents that serve us to this day, I laugh at the word originalist interpretation. It's a joke. The framers' imaginations were vivid. 
How else could they make the journey from England? They believed in a new vision of life where they'd have wider freedoms, including religious freedoms that the seditious insurrectionists want to replace with dogma and by force. Ironic that religious extremists want to remake America to adhere to the Bible, with their bigoted opinions and strict ideas about freedom, especially for women and LGBTQ individuals. The founders were certain that life in America would change because they'd left England hoping for the same. They were laying the foundation, but one can imagine how they dreamt it would turn out. Their vision couldn't be proven, but they had faith in their path, as Einstein did. The response to Alito's belch has brought protests today, huge protests, except in the video game industry. The collective silence is deafening from a group that's known for misogyny and worse. Maybe you remember Gamergate. Here's a quote from the Washington Post. Quote, The Washington Post contacted 20 major video game companies about whether they plan to make a statement regarding Roe's potential repeal or provide employees with monetary aid in places where abortions would no longer be available. Only Microsoft and Activision Blizzard responded with statements. So if your young son is a gamer, you can bet the images and the messages he's getting are majority sexist and misogynistic. This week we learned that prosecutors are investigating how classified material was taken to Florida and ended up in Trump's home. When the 15 boxes were returned to the National Archives, quote, items marked classified national security information were found. A grand jury has been impaneled. We all know Trump doesn't pack boxes. So some staffer will be in a world of hurt because they couldn't say no to him. Besides, a president can declassify any document on a whim. The exposure of the religious right helped by Alito relying on a witch-hunting misogynist from the 1600s in his road draft continues to rock Republican politics. Tim Alberto, uh, Alberta, sorry, on Politico reported from the front lines of the evangelical church. This quote is the mother load of his article. Quote, the crisis for the church is a crisis of discernment, Ken Brown said over lunch. Quote, unquote, discernment, one's basic ability to separate truth from untruth, is a core biblical discipline, and many Christians are not practice, practicing it, end quote. This is from Ken Brown, a renowned evangelical pastor with a lot of power. Brown said the biz- biggest obstacle in the evangelical church is misinformation and disinformation coming in from the outside. Another snippet from Alberta's political piece, quote, hard data are difficult to come by. Churches are not required to disclose attendance figures, but a year's worth of conversations with pastors, denominational leaders, evangelical scholars, and everyday Christians tells a clear story. Substantial numbers of evangelicals are fleeing their churches, and most of them are moving to ones further to the right, end quote. Ken Brown is a traditional evangelical compared to today's crew, and that quote was from him. According to Alberta, a woman emailed him a copy of a badly photoshopped picture of President Obama allegedly wearing an Islamic ring. Brown emailed back in part, quote, if you have forwarded forward this to anyone, you have an obligation to go back to them and correct it because Christians cannot foment falsehood. We are people of truth, end quote. I wonder when the extremist right-wing evangelical churches will be scrutinized, then challenged over their tax-exempt status because they are operating in bad faith. 
If a church is peddling political lies and whipping up anger through quote unquote alternative facts instead of normal church actions, they shouldn't get the privilege of tax exempt status. Quote, this is also from uh, Ken Brown. Rush Limbaugh had them for three hours a day, five days a week, and Fox News had them every single night, Brown said. It's harrowing to read these, isn't it? I'm telling you, I, uh, I knew about this from Missouri years, and um, it's important that they get exposed yet again. The Christian right has morphed into a right-wing extremist movement. Their militantism uh, was seen on January 6th when they stormed the Capitol. Take Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers. Rhodes is in federal custody awaiting trial for his alleged involvement in the January 6th insurrection. He's pleaded not guilty. Several other Oath Keepers have pled guilty to seditious conspiracy charges. An incredible interview dropped this week with his children and will rock the extremist world. It came out, uh, I think, on Thursday. Uh, The abuse inside the Rhodes house was terror. His wife has been on CNN, and she has changed her last name and her children's. I'm going to read uh, a small portion from the interview uh, uh, from Hate Watch, which is on the Southern Poverty Law Center's website. These are the Rhodes children talking. Sequoia. We had no idea how delayed the divorce papers were going to be. We thought that they were going to be delivered that day. We thought that if he is here and we are here when they are delivered, he would kill all of us. We felt that we were running for our lives. Dakota. We had everything planned out. Sedona. I was worried that whatever animals were left behind... He would slaughter. Dakota. My mom's little dog was the one that was in the most danger, so we took him. Sequoia. We had to go in two separate cars because there were too many of us. We drove down into Eureka to get the restraining order. When we got to the police station, they told us they couldn't do it and that we should just go back. <laughs> Amazing. That's, that's me talking, sorry. Uh, back to Dakota. Just go home and live life like normal until you can figure something out, exclamation point. I think they just didn't want to deal with a restraining order. Sequoia, we were gone for five hours and he didn't notice. Equally, I'm sorry, eventually my mom called him and he left. He was worried about getting a restraining order because he wanted to keep his guns. But he asked Sedona for a key after our mom changed the locks because he wanted to get into the house. We were we were pretty much living in constant fear. That's the end of the snippet I'll read. I really suggest you read the whole thing. It'll scare the crap out of you. There are many reasons the church is disintegrating. Some of them are I've recounted since I started this podcast. What began with secrets revealed of the Catholic Church has morphed into a wholesale, a whole scale, sorry, <laughs> meltdown of trust, attendance, and tithing. The evangelical church is under long overdue scrutiny with secrets being revealed nonstop. They've been militants since their rise in the 1900s, but have morphed into a dangerous group against democracy. The shadow side of our country was exposed when Trump ran, won, and began to deconstruct our democracy. The Christian right didn't care. He was an amoral con man, ready to turn America into his personal piggy bank. He was going to do their bidding. Three SCOTUS justices made him, quote-unquote, the one. Compliments of Mitch McConnell. This is part of what astrologers say is America's Pluto return, which will last from February 2022 to November 19th, 2024. In the sign of Capricorn, the same sign that was active on July 4th, 1774. One note I'll make, Pluto entered Capricorn in 08. So some astrologers believe America has been going through the Pluto change since Obama's presidency. (laughs) 
The mythology of Pluto sounds something like this. Now, some of the words you hear from me, you will you will hear from astrologers if you uh, visit YouTube or read blogs on astrology. That's because there's a great deal of consensus about how these energies move. I couldn't do this podcast if I hadn't spent 30 years listening to a lot, hundreds, thousands of astrologers and uh, articles about this. Um, so one note, uh, back to the one note, Pluto entered, uh, as I said, back then, and this is the mythology of Pluto. It's, it's known for deep soul-searching transformation. This tiny far-off planet rules Scorpio. So expect secrets to be revealed. Institutions could be challenged. What's not working will be exposed. The collective is impacted strongly by Pluto, Pluto's position, but it takes a longer time. Uh, it's a very long transit, especially with Capricorn in, corn involved, which is ruled by Saturn. Now, these transits are here for our evolution. Saturn gets a bad rap, I think, because it's a taskmaster, but pop psychology does a disservice to most astrology. When you go on the web, um, it's... It's very um, critical, and most of the people writing about astrology don't know anything about astrology when it comes to the, the drop-down uh, items that you can get when you just search a, a word and you, it's not an article. So, you know, be, be very aware. Um, Saturn also symbolizes hard work, which I found out personally because I've got Saturn all over my chart. Um, and it, it, it helps you get things right. And in retrograde, when Saturn is retrograde, not just when Mercury is retrograde, um, going over things that didn't work and, and understanding why and how you can make it better. I find it as a writer and a creative person, I love retrograde periods, even if they can be hard. The, the mythology of planetary positions tells a story of working through obstacles, letting go of crutches we don't need anymore, and leveling up evolution, as I continue to tell you. It's the only reason you and I are here on Earth. I'm constantly asked whether the energies are good or bad when I speak about the energetic fields we experience or that are happening at any given moment. Everything under the starry heavens is meant for our benefit and growth. The, the reason things uh, can be more difficult during some transit is because of what the person is choosing and doing in their life. If you're deluding yourself about your finances, for instance, this year will be rough. It's not the transit, but the choices you've made that are being exposed so you can recalibrate. If you can't tell your, your, yourself the truth about your own relationship, sooner or later a transit will come and you'll have to face your fears about it. The truth you refuse to accept is actually a portal if you do embrace it. On the other side is the law of attraction. My expertise lies in the shadow side of human behavior and how a person gets to the other side where the law of attraction can be tapped at any moment. The lunar eclipse in Scorpio is uh, May 16th and 17th, be depending on where you live, and... Uh, the mythology behind the Scorpio energy has been hijacked by negative pop psychology. Scorpio energy in itself is, is deep, it's nurturing, it's really loyal and determined with a psychic antenna. There is a secretive aspect to this energy, a mysterious vibe. I've, I know this, I'm a master of, of this energy. Psychology, the subconscious, and the unconscious, as well as the, as the taboo, are associated with Scorpio, which I know firsthand because of my life, because of how I've lived, because of the 35 years I spent in the dark, because my family was built on lies. The whole structure was built on lies. Um, the other thing that you, that's important is Scorpio acts this way mythologically because it rules the eighth house in astrology, 
which is associated with sex, death, and the occult, and others, other people's money. <laughs> As an author, this is my terrain. I'm a master on these subjects, and I've got thrillers, <laughs> thrillers <laughs> series to prove it. But the total, total lunar eclipse in Scorpio can also, could be transformational, but you won't know the full impact of the eclipse season until Mercury goes direct closer to the Gemini new moon on May 30th and afterwards. Wherever the eclipse season hits you in your cosmic birth chart, your horoscope, is what you're being asked to transform. As you can sense, I'm not a big fan of day-to-day -day astrological moments, but astrology has gotten so popular that everybody has their their day-to-day -day, uh, issues with it, and you can read all these pop psychology uh, analysis. The purpose of educating yourself about the cosmic energies is to give you a story to help explain your experiences, make sense of life, make meaning. An astrologer can run down every single detail, but they don't know your inner world. Eclipse season is, per is a perfect moment to take inventory. Are you being honest with yourself? Are you being honest about your work? Is it your soul song, or are you just paying the bills? Living life you can't afford? Major cosmic events provide an opportunity to get yourself in flow. Clean up your dust. It starts with clearing clutter out of your home, your room, or your life. Ask Suze Orman. Embrace the change you've meant to make now. Embrace what you want to make now. When you make the hard choices at energetic inflection points like eclipses, a portal opens and possibilities enter. It can feel scary. This is a signal. Whatever scares you, explore. The experience will help you evolve. It's how the I, it's facing what scared the crap out of me is how I got through my life. I wouldn't be alive today if I hadn't. That's how bad things were, how confused I was. There are many astrologers who suggest rituals when energetic ev events like an eclipse, full moon, new moon roll around. Meditation is my answer, but that wasn't always the case. When I started meditating decades ago, I couldn't go five, five minutes without thinking about something else. Take five minutes and ask yourself one question. Perhaps ask yourself, what scares me the most? What you want is a gateway to discovering your soul's purpose, why you are here. The closer you are to your passions, the stronger the law of attraction will be in your life. When you make hard choices, the law of attraction becomes a magnet to you. The point of understanding the mythology behind planetary energy is to paint your life in grander colors, grander terms. Getting in the flow of these energetic cycles makes facing what needs to change in your life clearer. Your instincts will become more electric, and your intu intuition will switch to visionary mode. This takes commitment to your life above the needs of others, because you can't offer your authentic self if you haven't investigated why you're here. I call it positive selfishness. My experience is, the, is that the highest rewards require the deepest humility and the greatest sacrifice. The eclipse season has already delivered major insights, messages, and unparalleled news events. We won't know the whole story until summer and into the fall, because there'll be a second eclipse season to drill home what has happened. I'm going to take you to uh, the Forever Conscious website with this quote. Quote, Eclipses are, point, are potent rebirthing portals. They can close doors, open doors, and shake up our lives in an effort to push us to a path of higher consciousness, forever conscious. That higher consciousness, to me, is evolution. There's a lot you can explore during the eclipse. 
It's important to look at what's already happened and listen to what your gut is telling you and your intuition and where your intuition is leading you. I'm Taylor Marsh, and this is Astral Soul Lightning. You can find me on Twitter and social media. My website is taylormarsh.com, and my full bio is on Amazon. Enjoy the eclipse.